Okay. What we're going to do now, and I just rinsed these off, and I'm just putting the whole pokeberry stem in here. I'm not sure how much. I think I'll leave it at that amount. And this is a ricer, and I'm just going to sit here and squish. Now, here is what is actually poisonous on this plant. If you can see on my finger, there is a little seed. The seed is what is actually poisonous on the plant. So if you want to eat these berries, you actually could, you would just want to spit the seeds out. So when I sit there and squish them in the ricer, it leaves the little seeds behind. And when I get done with them, normally if this had been any other kind of a berry or fruit, I would throw this extra stuff out to the chickens or something to eat. But because the seeds are poisonous, I throw them away. Instead, I throw them in the trash so that nobody has any issues of getting poisonous stuff. So as long as you keep that in mind, you can see all the little seeds and skins on here. And look at that beautiful dark purpley color. That <laughs> it's staining my my little wooden mallet thing. Let's throw the rest in here. And you can also see it staining my nice white tablecloth, but that's okay because this tablecloth is our craft tablecloth anyway, so it's not a big deal. But you can see all the nice beautiful purpley juice we got in here. And then when I get done down here, Show it in the okay. So we pretty much just left with stems and uh, seeds and skins. So I'm going to take my little. Uh, Spatula here and scoop off this juice on the outside. Save all the juice we can. And then this juice, I mean, you could use this for your jelly making too if you wanted. If you don't have a steamer and want to make jelly this way, the old fashioned way with the ricer then you would use this juice down here and it would be perfectly acceptable. That's what I used to do myself until I got that that uh, that steamer. And so anyway, I'm going to throw this away and then we'll get started on the next step of this little project. Okay, now I had seen on one of my fiber sites that one of the ladies said that the best way that she got her pokeberry dye to stick best and not fade was she did a one and one of white vinegar whoops there went my lid and water so I'm gonna get a little water here now I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes we're just doing a little tiny bit of I've got 0.4 ounces of some Gulf Coast wool. You can see it's still a little. And I'm going to stick it down in here and squish it in. And I'll show you in a minute here because we're going to, I'm trying to get it all sopped up with the liquid.
Okay, so in the bottom of the pan is our 0.4 ounces, 0 0.04 actually, ounces of wool soaking in our vinegar water mix. And we will let that soak for a while. Now what you can do also, if you don't have time to dye when your poke berries are ready, you can squish them out and then you could actually just take this and dump it in a, uh, a jar and refrigerate it for later. You could freeze it for later. I'm not sure how well the, uh, if it would break down or not at all because I've not tried it that way yet. Can it? Um, you could also can it. Okay, now another uh, method that I have, have read about on Facebook is to take, in the fall, take a pumpkin, a big one, cut the top off, take all the seeds out, remember to feed them to your goats or sheep or other animals because it's a good anti-parasitic, and then you can put your skeins of undyed yarn down in there or roving and pour this pokeberry juice in the cavity of the pumpkin and over your yarn and fill it up to the top, put the little lid back on, the little pumpkin lid that you had taken off, and basically you just let it sit. It's kind of like a suet bath, except it's for dyeing. And what it does is it sits in there and has some kind of chemical reaction and it kind of ferments and at the end you get this beautiful purple yarn or roving. That's another method that you might want to try. That's an old timey method. Okay, we've had our wool soaking in this vinegar mix. We put one cup of vinegar and one cup of water in this wool and now we're going to rinse it. Got a couple of little pieces of dirt that kind of came up to the... Most of this will come out when it's carded and stuff, but you can always pick out some more if you want. And I'm just going to kind of squish it a little bit. And we don't want to felt it up. And just kind of rinse that extra stuff out of there. And now we got fluffy wool again. So now we're going to come over here and let me move our dish. And here next to our jelly that we made is our dish of pokeberry juice. And we are going to sit here and go like this. Oh goodness, look at that. Okay, Ooh, look at that beautiful color. Anyway, now I'm just going to let that sit there and let it soak up that dye or that pokeberry juice and we'll let it sit there for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and rinse it out and see what happens. Okay, here is our wool that we had soaked in the pokeberry juice all night long. And since my hands got so red yesterday, I decided I'm going to wear gloves today. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rinse the excess pokeberry juice out. And hopefully... Hopefully we'll have enough that stayed in the wool. I don't know. <laughs> I might not have uh, left it in the mordant long enough.
me get my little sprayer. Well, oh, there's still a little bit. Oh, that piece of berry. Okay. Hmm? No. It'll, uh... Well, there. It looks like the water is pretty much running clear. So... Hmm. Not too bad. I think if I'd have had it open a little bit more and had more juice, it would have done a better job. So now what we'll do is we'll just lay it out to dry, and then we'll cart it, and we'll see what kind of uh, color we get all together. Okay, here we are back with our piece of wool that we dyed with our pokeberry juice. Now I probably should have opened it up better to have gotten more dye in there, but anyway, this is what we're left with. So I'm going to open it up a little bit with my little crazy kitty here. dropped a lot of dirt more dirt out of it down into there anyway now you can see how fluffy and such it is now we'll take a little bit and uh, so I see some more little piece of VM in there now I am not the best hand carter so for those of you that are great at it, don't try to cringe too much. <laughs> all, all I'm going to try and do here is, is uh, kind of show what... Uh, the color will look like. It's kind of a pretty little color. Put a little bit more in there. Oops. Like I said, I don't do use these things hardly ever. For one thing, I don't have the patience. Obviously, it still has little thingies there and there, but you can see that it's a nice color on there. So, it's definitely worth using pokeberries for dyeing. And next time I try it, I think I will try to soak it in more juice. It had soaked up all the juice that I had in there, and so I think if I had had more juice in there, it would have soaked up more and been even a brighter color. So, remember pokeberries for your future dyeing projects. See you later.